my awesome SPS teachers, your three ITRTs for the division are here to explain some things to you. We are really excited because there are many interactive whiteboards being uh, installed across the division. So we've put together for you a quick video tutorial on how to use your interactive whiteboard. Enjoy. Hi everybody, so we're just going to introduce you to the equipment. So right here you have the Epson projector. Uh, you have a, also have a Chrome box that's located near your projector. And you will also have a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse. You have a Epson remote and you also have a battery pack that goes with your pins that are for the whiteboard. You have two of them that are located in here. Okay, to get started, you're going to want to first turn on your projector. So grab the remote um, and press the power button. You may or may not see this screen. If you do see this screen, it just means that your Chrome box is not turned on. So I'm going to go over to the Chrome box. And the only button you can press on the Chrome box is the power button. So go ahead and give, press that and it will start to load in um, a Google sign on. Once you're at the screen, you can go ahead and sign in with your Google credentials. Now we're going to talk about some of the interactive tools you have to use with your projector. Um, you should have this equipment with that when you get to your classroom. Um, there is a rechargeable battery pack, so you don't want to lose that. Um, you should see this probably somewhere on your board if it's not all packed together. Um, it has magnets on the back and it can um, attach to the board, so I would suggest putting it on the side. Um, the two pens inside um, are both Epson to interact with the Epson projector. You have two colors which will both interact with the board at the same time. One has a orangey yellow look on it and one has a blue um, end to it. So both you could have two students interacting with the board at the same time. Um, you also want to make sure if you're using Expos on your whiteboard that you're cleaning it very very well so that you don't have um, the tips of these getting dirty. Additionally, you don't want to you want to make sure the students aren't pressing hard when they're using this because it would um, flatten the end of it and then it makes it less interactive with the board. So you just maybe need to hover over the board. All right, here with our white interactive whiteboard, we're going to continue with annotation mode. So I'm going to go over some of that material with you first. Um, over on the sides of where your projection field is, you'll be able to press on the side and see an arrow. It does pop up on both your left and right side. Um, you can take it if you are taller and want it higher, you can drag it up high. If you are shorter or want your students that are young to reach it, you can drag it down to the bottom. Um, so to open this, you just kind of tap on the side where your arrow would be and click on the arrow, it will open up depending on which side you're on. Um, annotation mode is this very first tab. Um, you do have some different things available for you here. You have mouse, so I can take my finger and change it to where it's a mouse. Down here is my legend and it changes to a mouse. Um, I can change it to highlighter and see how my fingers cha changing to all of these different modes. I can write with my finger I can also use the interactive pen. So you can use the interactive pens also while you're writing with a finger. Um, the, I have the blue interactive pen right now. So my menu went away. I'm gonna click it open again. And when I do that, um, and the blue is currently on a black small dot pen, um, I can erase part of what I've written already. Um, you can write with the pen. All the same things that you're doing with your finger, you can also do with both of the interactive pens. To erase um, the whole board, if you've written a whole bunch of things on your interactive whiteboard, you can hit this one that looks like a board with an eraser on it, and it will ask you if you want to clear all your annotations. So you just click yes, and you have a clean slate to start with. Um, this is a different field than what your computer is. So um, just note that any virtual student will only see what's on your computer or on the screen. They will not see what you're annotating on top of with your pens or your finger. Um, so 
to add to that, if I wanted to make my pen, um, and again, my legend down here right now is showing that my blue pen is a mouse, I could take it to scroll on the page. And because that is the computer, students virtually and in your classroom will be able to see what you're doing and it is on the computer mode. Um, if I wanted to annotate, I could go over here and write on the board. And just remember that your students in the classroom will see this. Your students that are virtual will not see this happening. And just be for consistency, let's uh, do some more here. All right. Great. Besides annotation mode, there is a whiteboard mode that you can use with your interactive projector. So we're going to go over that now. So the same little arrow that you click on to pull up your menu for annotation mode, there are two tabs at the top. One is for annotation mode, which is the very first one on the left. And on the right, if you click on it, it looks like an old style chalkboard. It will pull up a blank surface for you to work with. So you still have these same tools available for you to work with. Um, it's just going to be in a whiteboard mode. Um, there are some kind of cool features here you might want to use when you're in the classroom. Um, there, it looks like an image right here on the menu. So if you click on it, you have the option of the two different opposite contrasts. You have a white or a black surface that you can use to write on. Um, you got a blank one, you have ones with lines um, with both, and you also have grid. So um, I've seen, let me switch it over to the lines. I've heard elementary teachers really like this for students that are learning handwriting, and it might be something you might like as well in your classroom. Um, the bright colors tend to pop on the dark background. So if I'm writing in this line green, it will show up on that dark background really well. Um, the opposite of that, let me write in red, and we can switch it to the white background and you still see the same verbiage that or whatever was written on the board, but it looks a little bit different with the different backgrounds. Um, this works really good for math when you're trying to graph linear equations or science when you're trying to graph things as well. You can display that on the board. So if you have like a graph that you want to do, you can have it drawn and shade in the bars. Or if you have a linear equation, you could draw your and draw your equation on there. Um, I'm going to clear this as well and go over a couple of other things while I'm in this whiteboard mode. So I'll leave this up here. So as you notice, you have the toolbar that you can pull up on your left or right for both annotation and whiteboard mode. You also have a toolbar across the bottom. And the way it is set up in our school division is not all of those are functioning um, because there is not um, equipment set up connected to the projector. So the toolbar at the bottom that you might find helpful for you in your classroom would be you have um, a timer that you can pull up and there is um, there are there is audio that you can hear from the speakers in the projector. So I'm going to do a 10 second timer and if you have it up all the way, this is the volume for it. I'll have it go off here in just a second. Might be something you want to utilize in your classroom while you're counting down. It's loud enough for the students to hear, but not overpowering. Um, additionally, you have on the bottom, so besides the timer, you might want to also use um, the freeze button. It looks like a pause. And let me go back to annotation mode. So if you are on a website that things might have been moving and you want to freeze it, you hit the pause button. In the top right corner, you'll see free show up. That is also on your remote. Um, so you may want to use it off the toolbar and you may want to use it off the remote. Um, so when it's a toggle on and off, so I hit the pause button again, freezes off, you can navigate and move around. There is also on here an audio video mute. And so this is also good sometimes for classroom management. It looks like it has a cross through it right here. So if you click it, everything goes blank. If you're playing any audio, that is gone for the students as well. 
All right, so I just hit audio video mute and it's gone. So I did have to grab my um, remote to get that back on. It is in the bottom left. So if I hit um, audio video mute, it comes back on. Um, just remember if you use the toolbar to do audio video mute, you have to grab your remote to get started again. Um, so that might, those three tools at the bottom you might find useful. The other ones um, at this time, nothing is connected to your projector. So there's nowhere to save or print. Um, or use some of those other features, but the three that you were able to use, I wanted to point those out. Um, just like the toolbar on the side for your annotation mode and for your whiteboard mode, there are dots where you can drag it on the left or right if you need to move it. Sometimes it might be in the way um, of your taskbar on the bottom of where your Google Chromebook is or Chromebox. So just remember you can move this if you need to. Um, the down arrow will hide it, and um, that is the annotation mode. I do want to point out, um, we've had some questions about this, Expo markers still work on your interactive whiteboard. You can con continue to write with them, um, and it will show up on your board just like it did before. Did you stop it or pause it? All right, so your Expo pen's still right. Oops, you may run into this as well. I did it a couple times, so we took a take two. Um, the pen was still calibrated to my, I mean, my finger was still calibrated to the black pen. So if you take it and calibrate it to an eraser. All right, so I tried to write with the Expo marker. My finger was still calibrated to the black pen, so it shows up as a black mark. It thinks I'm writing with my finger. If I go ahead and take it to an eraser, it won't notice that I'm writing and you can see the Expo. Um, just a reminder, your virtual students will not see what you're writing with the Expo marker. Only the students that are in your classroom will see that for you. Okay, this is an overview of the remote control. Um, your power button is located at the top left and it's blue. Um, over here on the right is your source search. And this is where you can select um, from different image sources that are connected to the projector, such as your document camera. Uh, moving on down, the pin mode right here is where you can switch between interactive and free annotation. Right here is your menu button. This is how you access the menu for additional adjustments. Here in the center is your enter button. The user button is what you'll use to calibrate the board. Um, this section right here, you can page through documents with this page um, up and down arrow. In the center here is your zoom in, zoom out. Here is your volume controls. Right here at the bottom left, this is your AV mute. This is how you can temporarily turn off image and sound. Here is your freeze button where you can just stop um, the video that's uh, portraying on the on the board and here is um, displays the home screen. So there may be times where you need to recalibrate your board. Um, for example, if you're using the pen and you go to um, click on something or, or touch something with the pen and it doesn't work for you, or if you're drawing with your pen and your marks come up slightly off from where you're um, drawing, that's when you'll want to recalibrate. So we're going to show you how to do that now. You're going to need your remote control. And on the remote control, you're going to first uh, click on user. And then from there, you're going to click no on the auto calibration screen. Now, if you were um, uh, recalibrating the pens, you would go here and choose manual uh, calibration, but we're going to show you how to calibrate um, your finger, uh, the touch, so that's what we're going to do now. It's a few more steps to that, so we want to cover that with you. So you'll go to touch unit setup and choose that. Then you're going to go down to touch calibration. And from here, um, on the touch calibration screen, you're going to go ahead and choose yes. All right. And now what's going to happen is you're going to see dots show up on the board um, and the message is you're going to keep touching the marks as they move. So you're going to press and hold where you see a green and then just continue doing this. Until the whole board has been calibrated, it'll go down here, 
here, and then you'll end up at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you are in need of further assistance with your interactive whiteboard, you are going to want to submit a help desk ticket. So to submit a help desk ticket, navigate to the Suffolk Public Schools staff portal. And under, requ under requests, go ahead and select help desk tech request. You will then be prompted to log in with your Windows credentials. So this is going to be your employee ID and your password for when you log into a Windows device. And then it will take you here. And so for a request type, you have these options here. And if you need assistance with an interactive whiteboard, you're going to select equipment support. And then you're going to want to select the so subcategory, the projector. And so always read these little, um, this little box of instructions just so that um, we have all the information that we need so that we can um, help. So it says this request type is both mobile and ceiling mounted projectors. Please indicate which is in your request detail and include the asset tag of the computer to which the projector is connected. So um, just detail here in the request detail, what is going on with your interactive uh, whiteboard, and then for the asset tag, include the Chromebox um, asset tag that is included. Select your location and room number um, so that we know where to find you, and then go ahead and click save, and your help desk request will be submitted.